Hi guys, welcome to Kegdot's YouTube channel, the game development channel in which we use Unreal Engine and cover all aspects of gaming. So let's get right into the video guys. Because we use Unreal Engine at its core, we need good computers. And since it's a new year and the start of our YouTube channel, we've decided to buy two brand new workstations. Both having a 3070 RTX card. What is that called? It's a 3070 RTX card with this RTX 3070. Both having an RTX 3070 and an Intel Core i9. We need this power because, well, first we use a lot of Premiere Pro, so um, that takes a lot of rendering power. Then we also use Blender, which takes a lot of rendering power. And we also use Unreal Engine, which covers both CPU and GPU power for compiling your projects and also rendering your projects real time in 3D. Since both PCs are our workstations and not so much used for personal use, we chose to go with clean looking parts, such as our NCXT black case and other matching parts from MSI mostly, also black. Here is the list of our parts. MSI RTX 3070 Gaming Trial X and the Supreme X, a processor Intel Core i9 10900K, our motherboard is an MSI Z490 Mac Tomahawk, then we have RAM of Corsair Vengeance, 32 gigabytes, 3600 MHz DDR4, we got a Samsung SSD 1TB EVO 970, we got an NZXT X63 CPU cooler, NZXT H710 black case, and an NZXT 850W power supply. And yes, 3070s are in high demand right now, so we had to scour the entire internet for two that were still in stock, which was really hard. And then finally, we found two in a hardware store, which was about three hours away from us. <laughs> Um, so we rented the car and we drove all the way over there and instead of paying the 650 euros which is the actual price of the cards we had to pay 800 a piece but at least we got them and we are really happy with them. So the entire assembly of the computers took us about three hours per computer. First computer took a little bit longer actually because we still had to figure out how to put all of the parts into the computer. Once we got that all done and we also recorded all of it, we did it in my computer, which was about, I would say two and a half hours maybe. It was still a long process. And both PCs being about 2,200 euros a piece added up to 4,400 euros in total. Next to buying new workstations for our YouTube channel, we also decided to buy a Panasonic S5, which is what I'm recording with right now, to get some crisp videos such as these. Once both PCs assembled, we did not know what to do with our old PCs, so we decided to hang Rob's old PC on the wall, because why not? And that one is now being used as our NAS system. We use this NAS system to store all of our video footage and also to back up any file that we have Unreal related or Blender related. Our NAS system currently has about 5TB internal storage and is easily accessible through our home network. We connect to it using Windows 10 Pro using remote control. This NAS is really easy for us because this way it's easy for me and Rob to share files between one another and also just have a big storage file that's outside of our computer. Having both PCs assembled, we went straight towards installing all of our required software. Since me and Rob work so closely together, we decided to install the same software for a better co-working experience. Here's a summed up list of the software that we installed. NVIDIA GeForce Experience for downloading and installing the latest drivers. Discord for easy communication and for our Cactop Discord community server. Link down below guys, check it out. Google Chrome because, well, you can't do without it, right? Uh, creative Cloud for all of our required uh, creative programs such as Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere Pro for video editing. Then we uh, went ahead and installed the Epic Games Launcher for installing Unreal Engine of course, which is key for our channel. <laughs> uh, we also installed OBS for recording our screens. I record in 4K, Rob records in 2K because we are capped by what our screens can output. Then we went straight ahead installing Steam for installing and testing our games. Since we use Steamworks for releasing our game, we also need to install Steam in order to test with our development account. Both of us installed Blender for 3D creations. Rob will be using this the most, but I also need it in order to open FBX files and to be able to import Blender files into Unreal. We also installed Substance Painter to paint all of our 3D assets. So for painting our character or painting any character or basically world model uh, that we have. 
And finally, but not least, we also installed Fruity Loops, which we use for our music creation and SFX sound creation. And yes, guys, I know, I mean, you can just download music and sound somewhere, but we decided to do everything ourselves. So we also want to dive into how to make music and how to create sound effects. Now with all of our required software installed and both workstations ready to go, we decided to go ahead and work on our branding. So here's our logo. We always want to be fluid with it, make changes to it whenever we feel like it and make adjustments when necessary. Since Keck is Turkish for lol and dot of course means dot, we decided to go for Keck dot, meaning laughing dot. As soon as we were both satisfied with the look of our logo, we moved on to other branding assets such as transitions, an intro for our YouTube channel and an outro for our YouTube channel. As soon as we were happy with these results, we went on towards giving editing a go. And for this, in order to start editing, we needed a script. Now moving forward to our actual content, the game that we will be making and what you can expect from this YouTube channel. To sum it up, we are going to create a multiplayer sandbox free roaming social hub with up to 64 players in a lobby uh, in which you can interact with the entire world. So for instance, you see a bike, you can jump on a bike, you see a bench, you can sit on a bench. And within this one simple world, we want multiple uh, mini games that you can play. So let me just draw out a quick illustration of what this would look like. We aim to create a, first of all, multiplayer game, much like a sandbox, because you can interact with anything that you would expect to interact with, such as an ATM machine, a bike, a bench, a soda machine, and so on. Most games, you see all types of props, but you cannot actually interact with them. We want to make our entire world multiplayer interactive. And like I said before, we want to have many games within one game. So that means that we, for instance, will make a tanks game, a multiplayer tanks game, in which you can just shoot each other. We can do a boat, an RC boat racing game, for instance. We can do a RC plane racing game or whatever. You can do an obstacle course, a shooting game, anything that you would name, but mostly mini games. So guys, that being said, let's just get started on setting up our Unreal project, then making our dummy character in Blender, animating it a little bit, and then integrating it into our created demo scene. Hey guys, Rob here. Let me take you through what I made for this week's episode. For this week, I wanted to create a custom Cactal test character that we can use in Unreal Engine to test everything we make. Of course, you can use the Unreal Engine 4 mannequin, but we want to keep our new project clean and work with our own assets from the start. So I started off with blocking out the basics of a character first, and to make it look a little less like a Roblox character, I added a modifier that automatically makes the character look smooth and more human. I then tweaked the character a little more using Blender's built-in sculpt tools until I was happy with the final result. And after about 1-2 to two hours of work, I was satisfied with the character. With modeling finished, I added an armature for easy control of the individual body parts and to be able to easily create animations later on. I also imported the UE4 mannequin into Blender and made sure to scale my model to the correct size for an easy Blender to Unreal workflow and not having any scaling issues later on. And with the rig also finished, it was time to add the first animations. For Wim to be able to create and set up the first basic character movement in Unreal Engine, we only needed a running and an idle animation for the time being. And finally, much in the same way the Unreal mannequin has the UE4 logo on its chest, we decided to really put the finishing touch on our test character by adding the Cactot logo to our model's chest. Alright, so now that Rob is done in Blender and I have his exported files, it's time for me to get into Unreal Engine, use Rob's exported files and make this character move. I drew out a couple of notes for myself. These will help me with my development in Unreal. So let's switch over to my desk and get started. So once in Unreal, the first thing I started on was making a ground texture. And then I got straight into adding some props to my map. This was my final result. I was happy with the map, added a little pond and a big ramp that you can walk up on. Since Rob gave me all of his character models that were already ready for the right size in Unreal, all I had to do was drag them in and I could start working on the different materials for my different mannequins. After importing the characters, I started working on setting up the blueprint for my animations so that I was able to use the characters' animations in Unreal. After properly configuring my animations, I started working on my base character class and as you can see, he's pretty thing, so it works. 
Then I quickly started working on the camera so that we have eyes in our game. After my camera was attached to my character, I started working on a script to be able to turn the camera in the world. Once the camera script was ready, I wrote a quick little jumping script so that my character could jump up and down. After the jump, I started working on some basic movements so that we could walk around our map. I did realize that as soon as I launched the game, my character was strafing, so I had to configure a couple of settings so that I could actually look around in the world and also move at the same time. Once I was happy with how I could move, I worked on a script so that we can toggle between walking and running. Walking and running. I was so happy with this script that I decided to go for this ball and just put it in the water. <laughs> and as soon as the ball went in, I also decided to go into the water. As you can see, I still need to work on my ground textures and my camera collision. <laughs> but that's something for later. After having set up the basic walking functionality and toggling between walking and running, I worked on making a camera zoom in and out. Here's me walking around with the blue guy that I made. Also made a yellow and a red guy. And that's it guys, this sums up my character video. As you can see, we uh, realized everything that we wanted. And that's it guys, this was this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please consider subscribing and commenting down below or just liking to get our YouTube algorithm started. Uh, if you enjoyed our content, uh, you can expect more next week. Next week, we are going to be working on... If you guessed it, guys, that's really nice. We will not explain what we are going to be working on. You will just see it next week. So, okay, goodbye. That things aren't going my way Cause that would be boring Spend my last cent on cheese and champagne What a wonderful morning Never mind she declined to the first date